if I go to my drop-down menu again, just as a quick overview of what I can do with this document, I can view its properties, and when I do that, it'll pull up a screen of data that tells me all about the document and how it's been characterized. So I can see here um, the fact that it's for Austria and that it was intended for a variation type 1A submission, non-centralized, and um, that its document language is in English and so forth. And I could also, if I had permission, I can also edit those properties as well. I can edit the document from here. So if, when I do that, it would launch in whatever its editing application was. I can check it out. Uh, and when I edit it, it will be checked out. But if I want to just check it out and reserve it, I can do that as well. I can look at its version history. And if we're going to look at version history, we want to look at something that has a few more entries in it. So if we look at this one, Because this is a submission ready document, it should have a more interesting version history. And in fact, we can tell that it was created on the 21st. All this metadata was set. Then it was set for review, for approval, and to submission ready. So we can see these versions as we went along. We started with version 0.1 in the draft, moved through 0.2 in review, and 0.3 for approval. And then finally, we reached a major version uh, at uh, 1.0. And if we continue down here, uh, we see, um, let me go back to here. We see um, send to, which lets me either post it to another location, like a network location. Uh, I can email a link to someone, create a document workspace to collaborate on the document, or download a copy. Compliance details uh, actually is used if you use um, records management. So that would, would allow you to interact with the records management module. My workflow history, uh, let's go back to our 1.0 document here uh, so we can see a workflow history. This will tell us what workflows the document went through. So here's a regulatory review workflow, and we can see when it was started and completed. And what else do we have? I can schedule workflows to execute at a certain point. I can, and I would need the right um, ability to do this. I can manage permissions on the document if I'm an authorized user and delete. Again, that would have to be an authorized user, and it wouldn't normally be done, of course, on a approved document. Then if we move on to our advanced control menu, this is the menu that NextDocs adds for life science-specific features. And we'll spend most of our time today talking about life cycle operations, and we'll also look at the audit log. So life cycle operations will let us put a document through all of its life cycle stages in, the, in a controlled way. An audit log, of course, will be collecting up the audit events. So we'll look at that at the end when we have lots of events to see for a document that we've created. Sign document can be used if you want a process that involves signing without workflow. And we can take it away if you don't want that option. Uh, PDF operations, we'll see in a little bit that normally PDFs are generated at the right stage of the life cycle and you don't have to do this, but if for some reason you want one, um, as soon as you create a draft, you can, can uh, manually queue up that PDF. Uh, workflow, again, is usually integrated into the life cycle, but it can occur um, ad hoc if we wanted to as well. And document references lets us tie documents together that are related, for example, translations of labeling. Um, is one that we get asked about uh, quite a bit. So uh, with that, I'd like to talk a little bit um, about how we create a document. And to, in order to create a document, you'll notice that right now I happen to be in, if we look at our folder path here, we're in um, DE089 uh, in the cover letters folder. We're going to start creation of a document, and it really doesn't matter where we are when we start. You can be in any folder, because once you categorize your document, it will be placed in the correct location based on the information you supply. So when we supply, in, in our example, we'll supply a totally different um, drug product, and it will end up in the right place. So all I need to do to start is to click New Document, and it will start something we call the Smart Document Wizard. And the Smart Document Wizard is a very easy to use tool that collects information from the user on, on how to characterize the document. And it lets us 
create a document from a template that's stored in the system, and normally those would be your templates that we would add for you. It can also allow you to import a document from file if you have created outside the system or received it from a partner. Uh, and so you can, you can pick that right at the beginning. We can bulk import documents if you have um, multiples created outside of the um, document management system. So if I click Next, this is where we really start seeing the integration with the EDM reference model that Eric mentioned. The EDM reference model, if you're not familiar with it, um, is a DIA initiative, a sort of a grassroots initiative that was started at the DIA to uh, define the taxonomy and metadata of submission documents. And those are lots of big words. So the taxonomy means how do I take all of the documents that are included in most regulatory submissions and structure them in an organized way into, into document types and break down those document types to finer levels so I get to the point where I know exactly what I'm submitting. Uh, the metadata is the information you collect about each document. So, of course, that will be very different for a stability report than it would be for a clinical study report. For a clinical study report, we would have a study number and a study phase and uh, et cetera, whereas for a stability report, we might have a stability time period and uh, uh, so forth, a drug substance or a drug product. So what we start with is defining what we call the domain, group, and artifact. And what those are is nothing more than three levels of categorization, and those are terms that were defined by the DIA EDM reference model working group. And by the way, that working group, um, it, it took probably about a year and a half to come up with the whole model, and that group included people from across the industry, from big pharma, small pharma, um, vendors, consultants, a lot of people with a lot of years of experience um, put a lot of time into that model so that and what, one of the advantages is it's been vetted by this group. And also, it allows you to move from one company to another in a fairly seamless way. So that if you have a partner and they're conversant with the DIA EDM reference model, then you can talk very clearly about what types of documents you have in your system. We do have um, clients that often make some changes to this. And I'll talk about that as, they, as I go through. But let, first of all, let's see uh, what we have in these drop downs. So we start off by defining what we call a domain. And this roughly corresponds to the CTD modules. Uh, but we do have it split up a little bit differently. So we have uh, administrator for Europe and administrator for the US. We can also add other regions as well. Uh, but that's because the types of documents for those regions are, are just generally so different. Uh, and we don't want our, our list to get huge. So we've broken that down into smaller uh, groups. We also have clinical, non-clinical, and quality. You don't see module two in here, per se. That's because the uh, documents associated with module two fall underneath these three categories. So we'll see, um, when we look at quality, for example, we'll see that the quality overall summary falls under quality. So once I've picked one of these domains, I can drill down to the next level. And in my quality area, I'll see Generally speaking, things that correspond to the next level of subdivisions in the CTD table of contents. So I see uh, a number of drug product uh, sub subgroupings, and they correspond again to those um, 3.2 point, point um, P normally, and the 3.2 point S would correspond to our drug substance sections. I have um, literature references, regional information, and appendices, and um, my quality overall summary. And once I pick one of these things, like let me pick, for example, control of drug product, then my final level would be the specific type of document within there. Again, often these, are, these correspond to sections in the CTD, but not always, because there's different levels of granularity in the different sections. So here, it's pretty much what you'd expect to see, analytical procedures, uh, validation of analytical procedures, speci specifications, and so forth. And I would pick my third category, and then I would ready to supply a document name. Um, what we're going to do today is to create another cover letter. So I'm going to go back to US. And you can see how I can change these things. So if you change your mind, or if you're slightly um, unsure about exactly what you want to create, you can continue to navigate through these. We, we usually give you a cheat sheet as well. Uh, out of the box, the EDM reference model, 
defines about 350 different types of artifacts. So there, there is a lot of granularity there. But that's really needed in order to support uh, submission publishing because the publishers, of course, need to know exactly what they need to grab for each section. And uh, they need a lot of clarity in, in, uh, in bringing those documents in. So instead, uh, we will pick uh, US administrative cover letters. In this case, we only have one subcategory. And you can see how these things adjust as I change them. My drop-down lists are all cascading. And we're going to call this one, um, I'm going to create it for a drug substance called MSR001. Um, and I'm going to call it my sequence 000 cover letter. And if I go on to my next screen, it says, OK, I know you're a cover letter now. I'm going to ask you for information specific to a cover letter. So you don't see anything like a study report number in here, of course, because that's not pertinent to my cover letter, whereas if I was creating a protocol, I would see that. So in this case, I'm going to say, OK, I'm picking, I said this was for this drug substance, MR001. And of course, all these things are list driven, so they would be um, the sponsor or CRO's list of products in here. And for region, I'm going to say this is for North America. And it is for the United States. I, this would let me select multiple. For example, if I was in Europe um, and I had documents that applied to multiple countries, I could select multiple. My document language, also, uh, one nice feature here is that we have type ahead. So if I just click E, for example, it's going to pop forward to my first E, which is conveniently English. And here I have my application types. I'll pick new drug application and my submission type. So this would be an original application. And these lists, again, are adjusted according to what is appropriate for the particular system. So if you don't do ANDAs, for example, we just remove that from the application type. Um, and then moving on to my next screen, this is a summary. And you can see it added a few pieces of information here. This is a Module 1 document. It belongs in Section M1-2 in a US ECTD. And it also is telling you what folder it's going to place the document in. So it, it uh, adds intelligence depending on what type of document uh, you're looking at. If it was a clinical document, it would actually add a lot of information after you've selected the study number, for example, or non-clinical study document. In this case, it added a little bit of information about where it goes in the CTD. When I click Next, it will give me the opportunity to either create another document or to just navigate to this document and start uh, editing the document. So I'm going to say just go to the document location. And it's taken me to the folder. It creates the folder if it doesn't already exist. And you can see it's put it in. This is our the drugs. Uh, product that I chose this time was MSR001, and it's put it in North America cover letters. Here it is. It's telling me it's new. It was created by me, it's at, and it's created as a draft document in version 0 0.1. And the first thing I do, of course, is edit this document. So in order to edit it, I'm just going to click Edit on the, on the um, menu. I could also use my toolbar, or I could just double click on it, and it would open and, and uh, ask me um, to uh, start editing. So let me just. You're going to see a lot of logging in today because all of our users are on different domains and so forth. And um, you wouldn't normally see all of these logins like you see here. So here it's open the template um, based on the type of document that I created. And I'm going to make a few edits. But first, I want to show you something um, kind of nice, which is, a, a, as I said, there's a very tight integration with Microsoft Office. And if we pop up our um, document panel with properties, we can see all of the properties that were entered in our wizard are known to Microsoft Word. And again, this is something I used to hear a lot of complaints about back when I worked in Documentum Systems is I already entered all of those things in Documentum. Why doesn't my document know about them? And although you could develop integrations, they were always a bit fragile, whereas this is because it's a Microsoft um, coordinated platform, it really just works out of the box. 